Science and exploding rockets. These are the classic things you'll find in the Kerbal Space Program. But on a fundamental level, the game is also about exploration. Exploration of what is possible, but also the discovery of the new and the unknown. Kerbal Space Program 2 then introduces an entirely new depth to what is possible with the planets. Balancing the scientifically possible with the unusual or strange, this is a key concept for planets in the outer reaches of the Kerbal Space Program. The developers are keen for planets to be able to discover and experience vistas that are alien or unique, yet in true Caspi fashion these planets will be scientifically accurate. It means that no matter how strange a world may look within Ksp2, when you land there you'll know that somewhere out there in the universe a world exists perhaps very much like it. Now, when Kerbal Space Program 2 launches into early access on the 24th of February, it will begin a little closer to home, somewhat away from these strange and alien worlds. It will feature the entirety of the Kerbola star system. This is the star system that exists within KSP-1. Yet we shouldn't expect the new Kerbola to be a complete clone of the first one. For starters, the planetary tech has been improved and everything will have been rebuilt to be much improved. Additionally, developers have confirmed that they want every single celestial body out there to have something for players to discover and explore. It means that even the dullest of worlds will contain something to encourage players to explore and land on. And yes, this includes dress, a world so dull and boring that the KSP community have virtually memed it into non-existence. Other improvements we can expect to see are a new scatter system on planets. A scatter system is what determines the density and location of things such as rocks and vegetation. When we see NASA photos from the surface of Mars, for example, we see rocks and pebbles are scattered absolutely everywhere. It seems these are the type of environments the developers of KSP2 are keen to recreate. And then we have the cloud system. Now, not a lot has been said about this just yet, but if we look at the footage right here, it seems the clouds are volumetric at the very least, and this should keep things pretty entertaining and visually very pretty. In other footage, we can see that the KSP developers certainly have both Riley scattering as well as me scattering down to a fine art. This determines the colours we see in the sky and hopefully will also be affected by the types of chemicals that are contained within said atmospheres. Remaining on the subject of visuals, the art team has spent a lot of time constructing the various biomes that can be found around planets. It's been stated that the goal here is to create visually interesting locations but also give them a technical reason to actually visit. So, as with the first game, it will be possible to conduct experiments within these locations. And it sounds that, at the very least, they should be visually interesting and hopefully pose a challenge as well. Another thing that was possible in KSP-1 and will remain possible in KSP-2 is seamless planetary landings. It means that you can travel across the vast voids of space towards a planet in the distance and as you approach that planet, it will become increasingly more detailed, right up to the point where you make touchdown on the surface. To achieve this level of detail, each planet has two distinct assets, one version of the world that you see at a distance and another that streams in as you get closer. It again really does seem to highlight and emphasise that the development team really do want to make planets as detailed as possible, something I'm personally very keen to see. So, that covers much of what we know about planetary tech in the Kerbal Space Program 2. But how about specific planets? How many planets are there? What are they called? How many star systems are they going to be? Well, this one is well, easy to answer, but also difficult to answer. For example, we don't know yet how many star systems the game is going to feature. We know it's going to contain a Kerbola star system, the original system found in a KSP-1. It's also going to contain an additional system called Deb Deb. How many star systems exist beyond that though, we don't yet know. Likely, it's going to be at least a few. In terms of planets, we've got details of a few worlds that exist in Deb Deb, as well as potentially other star systems. Let's take a quick look at some of these. Char is the innermost planet in the Deb Deb system, right up close to the Sun, which means it is of course going to be very hot. What we know about this world is that it's made of iron. 
We also know that Deb Deb contains a protoplanetary disk. It's one of the many signs within Deb Deb that tells us this is a very young star system still in early formation. In fact, we come back to this point with the world called Gadama. This is a proto-Earth-like world, or perhaps it would be more accurate to say a proto kerban world. Footage so far has shown that this planet does contain water. Gadama is somewhat inspired by Earth over 4.5 billion years ago, so in a very early times, a very uh, young age here. Gadama has recently undergone a collision with another planetoid, which has resulted in the creation of a moon which orbits this world. The moon, additionally, is also being coalesced from Gadama's planetary ring, so quite a unique uh, planet here, a very young Earth-like world that also happens to have a planetary ring and also a very young moon. The name of the moon, funnily enough, is called Donk. It's a great name, although other than that, we know very little about the moon. Elsewhere in the Deb Deb system, we've got the planet Glumo. Now, this is a planet that's inspired very heavily by Saturn, a Saturn analogue. I actually think this one is a gorgeous looking world. It's got a ring, and orbiting around the world is a moon called Merbel. This moon appears to be an icy world, and it may well be melting and turning slowly to vast oceans. We've perhaps seen this planet more than many others, as it's the planet that's featured in the original announcement cinematic. You can see some footage of that on the screen right here. So that's most of the worlds we know about in Deb Deb. However, the Dev Diaries have touched on other worlds over the time. One of these is called Ovin, and this is a large rocky planet with rings. We've also got Rask and Rask. Now this one looks especially interesting to me. It's not clear which star system these are in. It could be in Deb Deb, but I don't think that has been confirmed one way or the other just yet. Now these worlds, as you can see, are very hot and they are locked together, both going around each other and neither has yet become the dominating body, meaning that neither as yet are a moon. It's clear that both of these planets have very hot surfaces, and likely, very possible in fact, that this heat is called, caused by tidal forces. However, again, not something that's been confirmed. Many speculation, but seems very likely. Now, these two worlds are going to be interesting to navigate around, specifically due to the gravitational challenges that two such worlds close together would cause. So landing here, orbiting here, should certainly be fun indeed. So that's what we know currently about the planets in the Kerbal Space Program 2. It's shaping up to be a beautiful looking game with some impressive mechanics behind it. Do let me know in the comments section below which planets you are looking forward to visiting. Also, let me know if I've missed any planets. There's a whole ton of information to go through, so very likely I might have missed something there. Again, let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.